Hello guys, my name is Arun and welcome to my channel. This series is a series of tutorials on advanced Fortran programming. Now, in this tutorial, we will be looking at the for all for all statement in Fortran. Now, uh, up to Fortran 77 and uh, and and, bef and up to that, uh, there wasn't any for loop statement available in Fortran and that was actually taken care by this do loop. But after uh, the uh, improvement after the development and uh, initiation of uh, for loop statements in other programming languages like C or C++ and several others okay uh, the importance of for loop statement became even more widely uh, acknowledged so what happened is that uh, in Fortran in the Fortran's history Fortran development history from Fortran 95 onwards uh, Fortran 90 and 95 onwards this for all statement came into picture up to Fortran 77, by definitions, you don't ha you didn't have this for loop statement in Fortran 90 and 95, and from the subsequent future tutorial, future uh, series of Fortran, for all statement was included. And what it does is that instead of instead of the conventional uh, uh, for loop statement that for loop statements provide in other for for programming languages, this for for all statement acts like acts uh, as a as a single state a single uh, uh, structure or a construct the looping looping construct that uh, makes uh, that uh, allows you to have uh, what do you call nesting in within a single line without having uh, without having to use uh, multiple lines okay now i'll explain what i'll explain you guys what you mean uh, what i mean uh, in this in this tutorial uh, what i have here is i just have a small program I have defined an integer, a parameter of integer with value 3 and because of this value, these four matrices A, B, B1 and B2, these are all real matrices of kind 8 and uh, these are all 3, 3 cross 3 matrices and I have in defined two integers i, j here. Now I define A to be uh, a 3 cross 3 matrix using this reshape command. I am setting B2 to be equal to A and I am setting all the values of B to be minus 1. Now, I am using this print underscore mat2 subroutine to print the matrix A in proper matrix format. And if you guys know want to know where this matrix print underscore mat2 is done, this subroutine is at the bottom. This is exactly the same subroutine we saw in one of the previous tutorials to print the matrix in uh, the proper matrix format. Nothing more. Nothing more. Okay. And now what I do, what I have here is that I just have uh, a looping statement, uh, the for all statement. Uh, it starts here and ends here. The notation, the syntax is follows. You have to write the for all st keyword and then within brackets you have to write the uh, uh, iterators varying from where to where. Here, here instead of this comma state comma, you have to give it in colon. That's man, that's a necessity in for all. If you just give it in comma and if you have to compile this, you will get an error. You guys notice over here, you will get an error. But if you were to, uh, uh, but here, since because of some important considerations, okay, they give uh, they give the colon notation over here, which you have to keep in mind, okay, and you have to write the iterator variable from uh, from uh, the iteration variable how it varies from one value to the other, and uh, just give a comma, and you have a second iterating variable, use it over here use it over here suppose you have a third iterating variable give a comma and say k something equals like 1 is to n something of that sort and so on if you have a fourth iterating variable give a comma and proceed on proceed on and uh, just like that go on with it just like that go on yeah and simple as that so, so instead of uh, a nested do looping kind of a thing you can just do a simple for all statement like this okay now what it does is that it just uh, this loop the for all the values of i and j listed with between the between this iteration range okay this uh, statement expression inside this for all and end for all is done accordingly and then those results are stored in j those uh, those results are stored done i um, mean uh, done accordingly now to prove you guys this this one single for all statement is same as that of this do loop state this nested do loop statement i have written the same i have written the same notation same stuff uh, same stuff with same operation i'm doing here within a nested do loop simple as that simple as that 
but instead of b i'm storing it in b1 now if i print a b and b1 and see how what how they look like we'll get an idea to we'll get an idea whether b and b b1 are different or not okay that's about it now what i've done here is i'm using the same command subroutine uh, command on the top i am printing the matrix b and printing the matrix b1 and uh, we'll get to this part in a minute we'll get to this part in a minute uh, it will be sl it's a little slightly different for now just concentrate on this part for now we have to compile build and execute this okay now what it does is that it prints the matrix a as per this format fine because this is column contiguous column contiguous in fortran so it prints the value 1 2 3 4 5 6 4 5 6 7 8 9 along the columns and then uh, it prints the b matrix it, it, it does all the calculations for b matrix uh, along this uh, under this for loop and prints the b matrix over here the subroutine b matrix subroutine call is over here and uh, and that is getting printed over here so the same so look at the values I, now to ensure that this matrix is same i have done the same tested do looping over here with b1 okay and if you guys notice b1 is over here and if you guys notice these two matrices b and b1 are exactly the same because we're doing exactly i we, we're doing exactly the same operation on both parts so it does the same now how is it different from do loop well there are a few differences okay we'll come to a and b2 a little later we'll come to that now what you can do is that you can do a masking statement also masking statement also something like this or you can put a condition as to where to skip and where not to skip and all for the for loop statement for this for all statement whereas in do loop if you want to do a if you want to do a condition like that you may have to write a condition over here with an if statement or something of that sort and if you have to write uh, sometimes you may have to write an if statement over here depending on the kind of program but here in for all statement all you have to do is that if you have a condition you just have to give a condition like this okay now what i'm doing is that i'm setting b value to be negative one uh, over here for all the values of b i'm setting it to be negative one okay and this loop will execute all the time except except when a i comma j equals no, equals eight only when that value reaches b will not be this b i comma j statement will not be executed but for all other statements a um, this looping will execute don't believe me watch compile i'm compiling and building and executing this watch now matrix in matrix a uh, a i comma j is a 8 at here at the when i equals 2 and j equals 3 now to show that that this part uh, to show that in this index b i comma j does not work look at the b matrix over here look at the b matrix over here in this portion uh, where where it corresponds to in where it corresponds in a a this this value has eight here and wherever uh, wherever eight comes in matrix a okay that value is un uh, remains unaltered and this minus one is because we initially set the entire matrix to be minus one except in that location everywhere else the operation the operation which is supposed to give us a matrix similar to b1 has hap has happened okay simple as that this is the kind of a masking thing you can do and if you guys uh, if you guys want to make this a little more complicated uh, so I'll, I'll let me put a new condition and uh, i not equal to 2 no, not equal to 2 something of that sort so this will do all the statement all the job in such a manner that i is not equal to 2 and a comma a i comma j not equal to 8 except for the when these two conditions are reached for everywhere else this looping statement works okay and uh, if you guys don't believe me again compile build and execute this now watch now in this entire row i is 2 so in this operation what happens is this entire row is skipped and fortunately fortunately this value is also skipped okay now okay let me write this as i not equal to 3 compile build and execute this because of this condition over here this value is unaltered because of this condition over here this value is unaltered kind of 
okay uh, only when this entire condition has worked it works kind of fine now uh, let me just you know comment this part comment this part out comment this part out thereby we are getting the same answer now what what i wa also want to tell you is that suppose if you are using this for all statement to modify that uh, matter uh, the same matrix alone same ma same matrix alone the results will be a little different when you do it in a do loop uh, i now i'll explain this concept with uh, in the comparison with the do loop and uh, do loop and the new matrix okay now watch here now if you guys notice i've set the value of a here and I'm assigning the same value of A to the matrix B2. So identically, matrix A and B matrix B2 are exactly the same. They just have the same value, but they have different names. Nothing new. That's all. Okay. So that being said, uh, okay, let me walk you guys over here. This is in this loop, in this for all statement, I am modifying the matrix contents of A I A using the matrix A value itself. Okay. And now I'm and I'm printing the matrix A over here. Now in this nested do loop, what I'm doing is that I'm printing I'm modifying the matrix B2 using the vat values of matrix B2 itself. Now uh, our intuition might have might have said that uh, intuition might have said that uh, okay we uh, as we saw in look as we saw in the top since for all and do loop can behave similar same in a similar manner. This modified A and this modified B will be same, okay? But to be honest, they will not be the same, okay? Now watch. So I have to compile, build, and execute this, okay? This is where the th these two sections come into picture. And if you guys notice, notice in this lock in this location and this location, this is where A is used. This is different, whereas in this location and in this location, B2 is different. So the matrix B A1 and B2, after their mo after the modification using their own values, they're entirely different. Reason? It's because in do loop, when the one mo when the ma when in do loop when using this do loop, uh, when B2 is okay, let me keep this. When B2 is modified, okay, it updates the value of B2 as and when it's modified, okay. But in this for all statement. When A is modified in this command using the mod using the values of A itself, what happens is that in, in, before the loop entire loop begins to operate, a separate copy of A is stored elsewhere. Okay, and then using those values, new co new corresponding values of A are being calculated using this loop, and this new set of calculated value is being stored to A. And as a consequence, as a consequence of that, the uh, for every iteration, your A I J will not be modifying, will not be, will not at all be modified, okay. And only at the end of this loop, your A I J gets modified. You mean all your all the entries of the, your matrix gets modified, whereas in the do loop, it gets modified at, after each and every iteration. So this kind of updates each and every iteration, whereas this, in this operation, this for all statement updates the ma updates the entire matrix only after the entire ex loop is ex entire uh, construct is over. So this is something of uh, uh, importance you have to keep in mind, and because of this reason, this for all is kind of a hybrid between a do do loop and a for, a for loop in uh, other languages and all. So this kind of stuff might be useful will be very useful uh, especially do especially when you are trying to calculate uh, uh, something uh, what do you call uh, what do you call uh, uh, time uh, time matching solutions and other stuff this kind of loop will be definitely useful for storing time uh, time matching solutions or finite element finite difference procedures on 2d finite difference methods procedure for 2d and similar other stuff you know and even for doing Gauss elimination or Gauss Jacobi or uh, uh, Gauss Seidel Gauss, uh, if I write Gauss Seidel and Gauss Jacobi methods and all, this kind of useful. I think this will, this kind of for looping statement will might be useful express uh, specifically in uh, Gauss Jacobi method, whereas this kind of a looping statement can be used in Gauss Seidel method and all. Okay, 
I'm just giving an example, but you guys will work around work around with it. So for these kind of statements, wherein uh, if you want to have this, where you have you need a condition wherein your matrix has to be not should not be changed during all the intermediate values and should be changed only at the end of it. Go for 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 all statement. Whereas if you want a ma if you want to alter the matrix value such that each and every value is being modified and the same modification is being updated, go for do loop. So these are kind of a, this is a kind of a comparison and a stark difference between for all, for all statement and a do loop statement which you have to keep in mind. And uh, application wise, some in some places this might work and some places this kind of feature works. Use them accordingly and use them accordingly. And uh, uh, this that's that is not all. There are other features also, and you can also go for a single line statement of for all. What you can do is that in this line, uh, sorry, uh, control Z. Okay, I think this uh, this also uh, okay it doesn't work. Okay, I think this has to be in the same line. Now let's see. Yeah, it works. Suppose if you were to write a for all statement in a single line, you can write like this, provided there is only one condition. Suppose if you had to write this in a multiple line or something, you have to use end for all. Okay, this is a clear cut distinction you have to keep in mind. Another clear cut distinction you have to keep in mind. That's it. That's it. Now that's all. I that's and uh, if you want to write a for all statement like a do loop statement, then again it's possible. But when you write it in that format, I think the result gets modified very much. So to prove that, let's do one thing. Okay, uh, let's write it as B3 again, new matrix B3. Let B3 be equal to A also. Okay, now what I do is that I copy this statement over here, uh, print it over here. Now let me just change this okay now i use a nested for for all nested for all uh, j equals 1 is to n okay and then i set end for all n for all now now i'm setting this to b uh, b what was this value? B3. Uh, B3. Uh, B3. And this is again B3. Now uh, I'm printing matrix B2 over here. I'll copy this. Okay, I think some copying mistake. Uh, I'll copy this. Paste this. And I print this matrix B3. Okay. Oh, let's see if there are any differences. Executing it. Hmm. When you use a for all statement or something of that sort, okay, even your mat, even your matrix B three, even your matrix B three is getting updated at only at the end. So even when you even when you do a nested operation, okay, even when you do a nested operation with for all. Okay, you you could see that this is uh, entirely the same as this. So even when you do a nested operation, the matrix values do not get updated only after they do not get updated after each iteration. Where rather they get updated only at the end of the sequence of for for all statements. So that way, if you guys notice, matrix A and matrix B are same, indicating that this updation does not take place immediately. Rather, it takes place at the end. No, that's all I have for you guys in this tutorial. Hope you guys learned a lot of differences and similarities between for for all statement and do loop, and hope you guys now now you realize as to where you can use a for all statement, where to use a do loop statement, and all. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. And in the next tutorial, we'll be looking at some uh, important concepts regarding procedure, in current uh, concepts regarding. Uh, procedures or sub procedures and uh, fu procedures like functions and sub uh, so yeah i will look at procedures uh, some features in it and bo most possibly uh, the save function the save function available in fortran also thank you guys for watching and uh, see you guys next time bye